There was an Inca god called Viracocha, and he was a white man, and he was the god of thunder. And they thought these men with their arquebuses were the very incarnation of Viracocha. The Inca force was in his litter, helped by his carriers. As soon as they were able to do it, the Spaniards went after the litter. And they started killing the carriers. One carrier would fall, and another one would replace him. Only at the very, very, very end of the tragedy, the litter started to move because there were no more carriers left. As the litter falls, Pizarro himself captures Atahualpa. His plan has worked to perfection. Atahualpa is taken to a makeshift prison in the royal quarters of Cajamarca. He thought we were going to kill him, but we told him, no, Christians only kill in the heat of the battle. Outside, Thousands of Incas are dead. The rest of the army has retreated to the hills. In spite of a massive imbalance in numbers, Spanish horses, swords, and strategy have proved decisive. But the Spaniards possessed another weapon they didn't even know they had. A weapon of mass destruction that had marched invisibly ahead of them. Today, the war against infectious disease is waged at biological research centers like Porton Down in southern England. They produce vaccines here against the world's deadliest viruses. In the 16th century, there were no vaccines, and there was no protection from the rampant spread of infectious disease. Twelve years before Pizarro arrived at Cajamarca, a Spanish ship sailed to Mexico. <laughs> On board, one of the slaves was suffering from the first signs of a fever. He was the first person to bring a deadly disease to the American mainland. The disease was smallpox. Within weeks, the smallpox virus would spread from a single source to infect thousands of Native Americans. Smallpox gets into the body when you breathe in the particles and they attach themselves to the back of your throat and the inside of your lungs. About two to three days into the illness, then the classic rash appears. And in its worst forms, this takes over the whole of the body with initially pimples and then enormous blisters until the whole of the skin, starting with the hands and the face and then spreading down to cover the rest of the body, is taken over by the smallpox blisters. From that time on, the patient is highly infectious. Because each of those blisters is packed full of smallpox particles, then if you burst the blister, the fluid will come out and large numbers of viruses will be spilled onto whatever it touches. Ten to twelve days later, his friends would begin to be taken ill. And then ten to twelve days after that, their friends. That kind of rate means the disease spreads exponentially. Its rate of increase gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more people are infected, until eventually 
it will cause tremendous devastation in the population. The first smallpox epidemic of the New World swept through Central America and reached the Inca Empire. Wherever it went, the virus decimated native populations, making them easier prey for Spanish conquest. But why were the germs so one-sided? Why did the Spaniards pass their diseases onto the Incas and not the other way around? This is Pizarro's secret weapon. Pigs and cow, sheep and goats, domestic animals. Remember that Pizarro was a swine herd. He grew up in huts like this, in intimate contact with domestic animals, breathing in their germs, drinking the germs in their milk. And it was from the germs of domestic animals that the killer diseases of humans evolved. For example, our flu evolved from a disease of pigs transmitted via chickens and ducks. We acquired measles from cattle. We acquired smallpox from domestic animals. So that these worst killers of human people were a legacy of 10,000 years of contact with our beloved domestic animals. During the Middle Ages, infectious diseases swept through Europe and claimed millions of lives. But paradoxically, repeated epidemics made Europeans more resilient. In each outbreak, there were always some people who were genetically better able to fight off the virus. These people were more likely to survive and have children. In the process, they'd pass on their genetic resistance. Over centuries, whole populations acquired some degree of protection against the spread of diseases like smallpox, a protection the Incas never had. When smallpox was taken to the New World, Nobody in the New World had ever seen a disease like this before. So the number of people who were susceptible was much greater. There was no natural immunity. And so therefore, the number of people who could both contract the disease and then spread it, and the number of people to receive it once it had been spread was much higher. More people would die, and more people would be susceptible to catch it in the first place. It would spread rapidly throughout the population, and the death toll would be enormous. Why hadn't Native Americans encountered smallpox before? And why didn't they have any deadly diseases of their own to pass on to the Spaniards? It's simply because they didn't have the same history of contact with farm animals. The Incas had llamas, but llamas aren't like European cows and sheep. They're not milked, they're not kept in large herds, and they don't live in barns and huts alongside humans. There was no significant exchange of germs between llamas and people. The key to Diamond's argument is the distribution of farm animals around the world. Aside from the llama, all the large farm animals were native to Eurasia and North Africa. None was ever domesticated in North America, Sub-Saharan Africa, or Australia. As a result, the worst epidemic diseases were also native to Eurasia and North Africa, and were then spread around the world with deadly effect. There's been a long debate about the number of indigenous people who died in the Spanish conquest of the New World. Some scholars think there may have been a population of 20 million Native Americans, and the vast majority, perhaps 95%, were killed by Old World diseases. A continent virtually emptied of its people. 